Go ahead and roll for perception. I got an 18. Ooh, 18 is really good. With that, you can see some advertising space available. So you're telling me if I have a product, YouTube channel, or podcast that I want advertised, I could do it here? That's right. And you can get more details by emailing thedungeoncast at gmail.com. Awesome. I'll have to do that. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm Will. This is the podcast where we talk about Demogorgon. Shout out to Demogorgon. That's not the intro, Brian. What are you doing? Hmm? What? Are you okay? Huh? Is it hot in here? You're not looking so good. Are you all right? Hey, all right, Will. Are you right. are you okay, man? You just fell over. Are you all right? What? No, uh, I don't. No, wait. What are you talking about? You just fell over, dude. Like. Oh no, that's no, that's nothing. It's nothing. Uh, all right, all right. Well, well, let's let the audience know what we're talking about today. No, we're talking about uh, Demogorgon today. Shout oh, out we to are. Demogorgon. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just going right. to... Well, so, I didn't do any research for Demogorgon. So. Oh, I did. Oh, okay, so you're going to tell me about Demogorgon. Yeah. We're flipping the script. Absolutely. Okay, um, tell me about your expertise in Demogorgon, Brian. Well, um, I feel like it is a, a vast wealth. And uh, <laughs> what, what, what do you know about Demogorgon, Will? All right, so what I know about Demogorgon... The answer Demo- is nothing. Oh, uh, oh, well, Demogorgon, okay. use, outside of... Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, which is you know, we do talk about Dungeons and Dragons on the show. This and is a D and D podcast, yes. A D, a D, you mean Dima Gorgon podcast? Well, today, yes, it is. Well, always. Anyway, okay. <laughs> uh, Dima Gorgon originally, outside of D and D, was based off of like a pagan or, you know, like a lot of Christian writers would mention Dima Gorgon, but traditionally in literature, he's like a really Kind of like a shadowy figure, like you don't really know okay. exactly. That it's hard to like pinpoint exactly what he is. He gets called a lot of different things that are not true to today's canon of Demogorgon. Okay. But um, the roots are more like, I guess originally it was a mistranslation from Greek texts, according okay. to, to what I read, Yeah, uh, around 350 AD. Um, so he was more, or it was more of like a formless threat of some sort. That's kind of what it seems like. like. Uh, yeah, I, okay. I guess when I say shadowy figure, I mean more like, yeah, the detail of what it, what looked, it looked like. like or anything like that gotcha. hasn't been quantified at this point. Right, but which is common for a lot of the ancient stuff. Yeah, it gets, it, Demogorgon gets mentioned as a, uh, let's see, like a supreme, like, this is what they say, the supreme being of the threefold world. And I looked that up a little bit because yeah, I was like, what what's the, the, what's the threefold mean? world? Okay. It's actually, I think it's Buddhist. Oh, uh, like ideology where um, they're talking about like these three pieces that make the world is kind of what it seems like. Uh, it consists of in ascending order, the world of desire, the world of form and the world of formlessness. OK. And I think they're mentioning Demogorgon as uh, being in root of like the world of the formlessness. Like he's one of the gods of hell. OK. Um, All right. Yeah. It's it, Okay, it's, so that's the origin. That's like what the idea is based yeah, on. Yeah, that's where we first pick up on Demogorgon in text. And mm-hmm. it, it's actually something else. It's not, Demogorgon isn't what they were talking about as like, that's that's just the name we ended up coming out with. I okay. guess we like when they're talking about it in Greek history, they mean like this thing, Demogorgon, that it was called something else, but we called it this. It's the same thing. We just called it the wrong thing, I guess. Called it, ended up calling it Demogorgon. Oh, so, but it had a different name. Originally. Yeah. Okay. So you, that's what they mean by mistranslation. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So we go through the Middle Ages. There's mention of Demogorgon in Christian writings and all the way up to the Renaissance. They're calling him the Demon Gorgon, uh, the Terror Demon, the God of the Earth. Those are all names that okay. they mentioned. Just one of the many demons in hell was the idea. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Um, or the demon in hell. Or like, it's very unclear where he stands in like this kind of like some people call him the creator of of the earth and the material realm yeah this is the point in time where you get a real blend of like what we would now know is like traditional christian theology and right. like the blending of the the current folklore of the area and like the the pagan theology of the area right yeah pretty much we're, the, we're then we move into like more like traditional pop culture of writing okay. and we get into uh Paradise Lost. You've heard of that, right? I've heard the name. Yeah. I don't know much about it. I don't really know too much about it. I just, I really like this passage from Paradise Lost. They mentioned Demogorgon. Uh, I wanted to read it real quick. So, uh, of chaos and his dark pavilion spread, wide on the wasteful deep with him enthroned, sat sable vested knight, eldest of things, the consort of his reign, and by them stood Orcus and Aedes, Mm. and the dreaded name of Demogorgon, rumor next, and chance and tumult and confusion all embroiled. 
and discord with a thousand various mouths. Now, okay. it sounds really ominous. Right. It doesn't really focus in on like you said the name Demogorgon. Yeah. But like, what do you what do you mean? Yeah. And you mention it alongside of Orcus. That's like a thing we know from D and D. It is. And also, Hades. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of looked. I was like, what's a- it's spelled A D E S, but they mean Hades. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Figured as much. Right. Now, so, Paradise Lost. Uh, when was that written? A while ago. Okay. All right. So <laughs> wait. Okay. So let's let's jump ahead. Unless you have more to talk about history wise with pre D and D Demogorgon. I do. I do have a okay. little a little bit. All right. Um, so just. Um, there was a, this guy, Johann Weyer. He's mm-hmm. a demonologist in the 1500s, which I guess is a thing in that era. Okay. Um, with like exorcisms and stuff. <laughs> it's been a thing throughout history, for sure. He's He called Demogorgon the master of fate, which like... Okay. I, I feel like history of Demogorgon like really plays up the the factor of like godliness. When in D&D, right, right. we've kind of quantified that he's not exactly a god. No, but he's god And not even really power. close. Like, Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like maybe a comparatively minor speaking, deity. like yeah. we're maybe thinking about TM at level. Yeah, especially when we're going like comparatively with uh, like devils. Yeah, yeah, which is you know we have to make those comparisons. Yeah, of of all the like super powerful uh, deity like beings in the in the universe of D anD D, demon lords are pretty much at the bottom of that tier. Yeah, so. which is like. I mean, small fish, big pond, I guess. Basically. But like, also, that's a fucking whale. Don't go near it. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. (laughs) No. So, so how did, uh, so when did D&D utilize Demogorgon? Um, Well, they started getting into, um, like in the 70s, they they first put them in uh, into a book called The Eldritch Wizardry Mm -hmm. in uh, 1976. Uh, They, this is a cool book. They introduced psionics with like the mind flare. They Mm -hmm. introduced the druid. And they introduce like ancient artifacts and demons, and Demogorgon is mentioned. Nice. Um, I actually pulled up like a cool stat block of Demogorgon with like a very early sketch of what they might look like. Yeah, we should. Yeah. So Demogorgon, from my understanding, is like basically a giant like reptilian monstrosity with like two baboon heads and then like tentacles for arms. Yeah, I think they're uh, they're actually mandrels for the heads. And yeah, tentacles for arms. He's got like this big forked tail. Okay. And then like there's some variation between depictions of him. Like if you look at like Out of the Abyss, his heads are, I mean, if you look real close, it's like, okay, that's a mandrel head. Like some people say he's got like hyena heads. Yeah, I've um, always read it was baboon heads, but. It, some are baboon heads. Okay. Um, but in a lot of the reading, they, they say mandrels specifically, which okay. I guess is like, I guess Demon Gorgon's brother is uh, Mandrel Gorgon or something like that. Never heard of him. I don't know. It's in Meh. it's in my later notes. Uh, okay. I'm not really too worried about Demon Gorgon's brother. <laughs> okay, but uh, <laughs> but this is kind of a cool stat block. Like I was looking at this, like this has no very little semblance, mechanically speaking, to a current stat block. Oh, to five E, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely not. Yeah. But the frequency of Demon Gorgon is very rare, so it's well. Re- I would hope so. There should only be one. Should of only him. be one. <laughs> so it's super hard to get a shiny Demon Gorgon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's definitely a legendary Pokemon. This has armor class. Negative eight? Or yes. is it just dash eight? No, that's negative eight. So in, in first super easy to hit. No. Just roll that D twenty. In, in first and second edition, the lower the AC, the harder it was to hit. You were actually uh when you roll the dice, you were trying to get as low a number as possible. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So eight uh out of twenty that's pretty good. So to get a negative eight, you would have to have a modifier of a negative nine minimum and then roll a one. Oh wow. Yeah. oh wow! Oh wow! Yes, very difficult. Oh, to super hit. high as then. he should be. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's the equivalent that's of rolling a twelve. That's incredible no. AC. Absolutely. The, oh wow. Okay, <laughs> so real good AC. Yeah. Two hundred hit points. Um, I imagine that's a lot. I don't. I don't know first edition all that well, but I my my uh, impression is that the numbers were a lot smaller back then. Okay, so two hundred seems fucking huge to me. Fifteen feet of movement speed, which seems so super duper low. Yeah, compared to what we do now, where it's like a regular person has thirty feet. Yeah, that's I mean, Demon Gorgon ha- is eighteen feet tall according yeah. to the stats. So, well, like, I don't know how how long or round is supposed to be in first edition. I don't know. If, oh you know, yeah, maybe the time scheme is skewed. I don't know. Uh, I'm not an expert in this. Let's see what else. Anything else? Damage, uh, damage and attack, all special. Uh, <laughs> he's got some special attacks, I guess. He's got cool. plus two special defenses or better with weapon hits. I don't know what any of that means. 95% magic resistance. I mean, that hmm. seems good. 
Well, yeah, I, I think that <laughs> that's probably a percentile dice roll. Yeah, okay. So I'm actually curious. So, if if any listeners out there are very familiar with with first edition, you can tell us what we're getting right, what we're getting wrong. But yeah. if I were to make a guess, I would say that in order to uh, cause a magical effect to affect Demogorgon, you would have to roll percentile dice, and you have to get a 95 or higher. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, that's my guess. I mean, out of all the five of you I've played so far, I've never rolled the percentile dice outside of like. This, it's fun to roll dice. Like yeah. I've never done a meaningful percentile it die roll. Definitely does not come up as much as it did in older editions. For what, sure. What can we talk about that for? Like when yeah. it would come up? Like what's up with that? Um, the only times I can think of are the Sorcerer's Wild Magic chart. You would roll a percentile dice. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, there's a um, a magic item called oh my gosh what was it called uh, the the Wand of Wonder the Wondrous Rod. I can't remember what it's called, but basically what it is, is it's a magic wand that you use it and you roll a D100. Oh, and yeah. That's what comes out of and it. And so the equivalent of a D100 would be those dice, right? Yes. You roll both of them and then it gives you the percentile. Yeah, you, you of... get, uh, there's a chance from one to 100 on right. those dice. So, well, yeah. that's cool. So, so the, the only thing, I uh, it says size large, 18 feet tall, and he's got some kind of psionic ability on here. I don't know what this means, but it says 150 slash head. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Demogorgon does have some like psionic qualities about him, as far as like, like very common it, with the abyssal stuff. Yeah, his like gaze can make you do certain things. We'll get into that later. As you said, like the mind flayers came out in the same book, and I think in the beginning, like as they were beginning to develop this mythos, a lot of the abyssal stuff and the far realm stuff was really intertwined. Right. So, so like, there are some video games with Demogorgon in them, and, and the oh, '90s yeah. and stuff. Uh, this one is called A Baldur's Gate Two. Well, yeah, um, that's a D and D game. Yeah, and you where? can actually go to Demogorgon makes it into the material plane in this one. I guess you oh, can like wow. actually go. You can make a sacrifice to Demogorgon in it. You can kill Demogor- the avatar of Demogorgon, banishing him back to the abyss. Mm-hmm. Which, that's how that works, right? You kill a demon, they go back to the abyss. Yeah, uh, the, you, this the only way quality. to permanently ki- only way to permanently kill a demon is to kill them in the abyss. That's pretty. So if powerful. you kill them outside of the abyss, they just. Was that the true for devils abyss. as well? It's true for our, all immortal beings. Oh, okay. Angels, yeah. devils, you got uh, Ugoliths, you have to kill them in their home plane, otherwise they don't die. Yeah, just um, put your sniper right where the respawn points are <laughs> right? and just have them go for it, headshots, <laughs> gotcha. you know? Um, but we get into, uh, what's this other video game called? It was uh, NetHack, that's right. It seems like some really linear, um, linear game where Demogorgon is notably the most powerful enemy in the game. Sure. I don't really know anything about it other than that. Uh, I thought it was worth mentioning. What was it called? Uh, NetHack. Never heard of uh, it. The sequel to Hack. <laughs> no, never heard of it. <laughs> um, and then we get into Stranger Things, which is kind of interesting because right. that's what reminded me of going back to the spot was uh, the psionic thing. Because d- I guess they say demigorgons in Stranger Things. We've talked right. about that a little bit yes, before with a consistent mention of demigorgon on the show. But um, they, they're they they're like basically dogs that get sicked on these kids of, of Stranger Things, right? Uh, they're they're like hmm. um they're apparently they're controlled by the mind flare, which is that the D D also like the D D mind flare? No, it is super nothing like the Oh D&D man, I've never seen Stranger Things, but you have. Yes, it's very good and I highly recommend it. Uh so so in Stranger Things, I don't want to get into spoilers because that's definitely uh something that could be very easily spoiled. Oh, sorry, did I spoil at all? Not by really. I mean you just said a bunch of things that if I didn't know what Stranger Things was, I would be like, oh those are just random words. Yeah. But uh, basically, uh, Stranger Things is really tied into like a, a HP Lovecraft type of mythos. Oh, okay. And so, I mean, I guess. Like the upside down. Is the like upside the, down. The outer is plane. Like there, there's maybe an equivalent to the abyss, but there's also, I would say, an equivalent to like the far realm. Right. It's okay. like the far realm, basically. Cool. And there are these, basically, there are who knows how many types of alien type beings that like don't really compute when it comes to our world mm. and like there's this like master monstrosity that they called the mind flayer okay so basically stranger things what what they've been doing is like these kids are D D nerds and it, when they've been coming across these like scary things they're like finding parallels between them and a specific D monster so right the okay. first thing that they come across is this bizarre like beast humanoidish looking beast and they compare it to D- demogorgon it's like a big raptor right so they're comparing it's, it to the D and D version, like this version of Demogorgon. It, they're just attaching a name to it because in okay, oh, they're just trying to. Okay. In the first episode <laughs> of the show, uh, they're they literally their their characters fight Demogorgon. Okay, and like it's this big threat, and everyone's scared, and they're about to get wiped. But then the game ends, and 
uh, the, you know, they all go home, and then that's when all the bad stuff in real life starts to happen. So, like the do, the do you name. Happen to know what edition of D and D they're playing? Probably second edition. Oh, okay. oh wait, wait. Yeah, second edition. Mm. Is it maybe third edition? No, no. They're. Pro- I think they're playing first edition. Because, oh, wow. Yeah, so it's, it's this it's demon in gorgon. Yes. <laughs> so okay. So long story short, like the, the demon gorgon was just the thing in the game that was like the ultimate threat. So when they came across this mon- monster, it was like the ultimate threat. So they just oh, named okay. it the demon gorgon. That okay. That explains that but explains it for me. Let's actually get into who and who is demon gorgon. What is he? Where does he live? Like, um. Well, I wanted to talk about. Okay. Uh, I kind of wanted to go over the history of Demogorgon because I think knowing the history is really important. Yeah, I wanted to get I wanted to get into the specifics of Demogorgon as we know him now later. Yeah, okay, okay. So, so I kind of want to talk about um, like third edition a little bit and second edition. Like we see him in the <laughs> Monster Manual and we see him at of second edition. We see him in some books. This Book of Vile Darkness I read. Yeah, it, it was pretty, pretty cool. pretty famous one, yeah. Um, this, this is cool because Demogorgon is like a, um, like the player, I think the PCs are manipulating being manipulated by Demogorgon to like take down this dragon is pretty much what I got okay. out of it. Yeah. Um, he's in the Fiendish Codex. Um, like, th- dude, there's just so much third edition stuff. So, oh, that, yeah. like, yeah, third edition was where they really fleshed out the demon and, and devil lore. They, they, they set Demogorgon and a bunch of other uh, demon lords. Um, well, they, they stacked Demogorgon as the top dog, mm-hmm. obviously. Right. Uh, CR 23. But they, I think what's cool about it is they, put it in a way for you to increase their power if need be so if you want orcus to be more powerful he's not but if you wanted him to yeah you could They're you like could do ultimate that rivals yeah and then he's featured in this uh demonomicon of igwilf is i guess is what it's called column of dragons number 357 dragon i didn't know about it until i started researching this it was a really cool magazine yep dragon magazine was a big thing for a long time yeah yeah as all the um uh, I think they call him the Master of Beasts or the Lord of Beasts in on the cover of that one. Is that what he is? I thought I always okay. thought Yinagu was the Lord of Beasts. All hail Demogorgon, the Demon Lord of Beasts. Oh, okay. I mean, that's what it says on the cover. Yeah, it I just happen to have edition it. To edition. Maybe yeah. he is uh, the Lord of Beasts. Well, yeah, well Demogorgon has lots of names. Yinagu is the the um, the Demon Lord of Savagery. That's right. He's a demon prince. He's the Lord of all that swims in darkness. Right. You know, several mm-hmm. several of those different things. You know. Right. right. Um, but this one was really cool. He was featured in Savage Tide adventure path which was coming out in these magazines mm-hmm. and that's such a cool you basically got to go fight demogorgon you got to go into okay so demogorgon i guess we should talk a little bit he's from the 88th plane of the abyss or mm-hmm. level of the abyss right. uh they call it the gaping maw it's like this big oceany place we could talk more about it later but um you got to go there and fight the demogorgon that's pretty cool and that seems sick as hell yeah apparently he's gonna unleash the savage tide upon mankind causing everyone to go insane yeah, that yeah, Demogorgon's really tied into insanity and trying oh, to yeah. get crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we will get more into that. Okay. So <laughs> after after that, the next mention is fourth edition. Um, mm-hmm. he's one of the few demon lords actually mentioned in that monster manual. Right. And he actually appears on the mo- cover of the monster manual number two. Yes, he's he does. included inside of there. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I had that stat block. I don't. Um. I mean, it was impressive, but there was a lot of problems with uh, fourth edition's first two monster manuals. They were underpowered. Oh really? They had to rebalance the math. Yeah. What? Yeah. Did they? How did they tackle that? Um, they actually they came out with an algorithm that you could tack onto your. Basically, it was simple. It was oh like, my god, cut their HP in half, double their damage was the shorthand of it all. Oh, that's a nice. I mean, because you're already doing even having to add that to your monster manual is like, oh my god, yeah. really? I have and, to and alter ba- this thing I bought. So starting with monster manual three, they basically all the monsters they came out with from then on had the correct math that you yeah. needed. Yeah. So. Well. Okay. Well, I kind of want to see if I can find that stat block. Yeah. It's just really hot. I don't feel so good. Maybe we should take a short rest. Let's take a short rest. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Welcome to the part of the episode where I don't feel so good and I'm taking a rest <laughs> to get a little better. That's good. Um, hey, real talk, everybody. Thank you, thank you for being here with us for episode 100 of the Dungeon Woo! Cast. I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, it's it's been a wild ride, and uh, mm-hmm. I know a lot more about D and D than I used to. But a little I, bit more. I still don't know everything, <laughs> and uh, that's why Will's here. But today I'm teaching him. Indeed. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it, and uh, just thank you so much. Um, if you want to help us out, you can tell somebody about the show. That's really the best way that you can you can do some help stuff for yeah, us. For us. <laughs> um, you can also hit up our patreon.com slash the dungeon cast and 
You could pledge to us there. There's lots of cool stuff in all of the tiers. Um, new content coming out as often as we can put it out for you guys. We do special monthly things on our Discord. There's a link below. Links below for all this stuff, our Twitter, blah, blah, blah. You can find us where you buy podcasts. You don't buy podcasts. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think we have some special people to thank. Um, I'm going to start with uh, Alex Pilot. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. It. These are Patreon new pa- new people to Patreon. Um, I hope you're enjoying um, Flashbang and the Surgeon, which is a superhero game I run in the tier you now belong to. Uh, let's see. We got Andrew Cook. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. And uh, Fred Bauer. Thank you, Fred Bauer. Thank you, Fred. Uh, we really appreciate you guys and uh, everything that you guys do per month for us. It's uh, it's really awesome that you are uh, part of our Patreon, and I hope you're enjoying all the benefits. So um, what else we got to talk about, Will? I want to announce uh, our newest contest. Uh, as a lot of listeners probably know, there's a new juicy book coming out in November called The Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. Now, this book, from my understanding, is going to have all kinds of uh, character and dungeon mastering options for a brand new setting being brought to D&D. It is one of the many settings from the game Magic the Gathering, which is also owned by the same company who owns D&D. And yeah, it's just really exciting. And, uh, you know, some people have, have kind of brought up like the idea that like maybe this is just a cash grab. You know, they're just trying to cash in on Magic the Gathering fans. But for me, I'm just like they've owned both of these franchises for so long and they've never crossed streams before so this is pretty exciting i mean they're me, both set in fantasy aren't they right like it's, it, it's it almost a no-brainer sense. like yeah. how, why is it even taking this long but why aren't they calling it you know magic the gathering the dungeons and dragons card game you know Ooh, i don't know that would not go over well with you don't magic think so no that they we're talking about a very very old game with a lot of hardcore fans that would feel super betrayed if you did that it kind of seems like they're you know they're they're converging here. Why it, wouldn't they converge on the other much, end? Much it's much more natural. D and D is a game about exploring new worlds and customizability and bringing in new settings to to fit like the game itself. So for me, it feels much more natural to bring Magic the Gathering settings into D and D. Oh well, I, I was thinking like, why why isn't there a Demogorgon card? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you could. I don't. I don't know if it would go over well with the Magic Gathering fans, but who's to say? I don't know because no. I don't play Magic the Gathering. So. I mean, I was familiar. I, I was. I was Magic the Gathering adjacent, if you will, right. um, in the card gaming world. But like, right. yeah, I have no idea how they would feel about that. So you might, you might have right. a good point. Anyway, so we are giving away two copies of the Guildmaster Saravnica, and all you got to do to enter this contest is to share the show via social media. That could be Twitter. That could be Facebook. That could be you know, a Reddit post. It could be anything. It could be literally WordPress. a chain. It could be WordPress. <laughs> you can <could> literally. <laughs> Send an email to all the people in your address list on your Gmail account. If you send me proof, if you send us an email with a, with a snapshot or a link to one of the things that you've shared by sharing, you know, of sharing the show, I will enter your name onto the list. And yeah, so God, the idea we- here, it, the idea here is to to just share the show, however, by whatever means necessary. Word of mouth. Word. Well, if, word of mouth. No. <laughs> word of internet. Word of internet. Yeah. Yes. So. Dude, what if we get a crazy chain email that's like. If you don't like the dungeon, if you don't go listen to an episode of the Dungeon Cast in the next five minutes, <laughs> you'll you'll be a plague on your family, and your mother will perish. Or you whatever. know what that sounds like to me is an entry into this contest. It so, does, yeah. <laughs> so send yeah, us a chain email. So yeah, just send me don't send wish, me don't a wish snapshot, send parents. me a link. You could share it on Twitter. You could share it on your Facebook page. You could share it wherever on the internet is easiest for you to yeah. spread the word about the show. If you can prove that you did it to us by like. You know, hashtag Dungeon Cast on Twitter, or you know, if you send an email, send the email to us, or blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. If you can prove it to us, you get entered in the contest. So you know, if anybody's run in our contest before, same same rules pretty much. Plus, you get more opportunity. And uh, we'll be announcing the winners on November twentieth, which is the date that the book's released. If you take a video and send it to us on like Twitter or whatever of you telling somebody, some stranger on a bus that to watch the Dungeon <laughs> Cast, we will count that as an entry. Sure. And I'll make sure Will adds yeah. you to the list. I will add you to the list. <laughs> okay. That's Let's call this rest uh, longer. Rested. We yeah. done rested. It's rest good. over. <laughs> rest. Okay, back to the show. Back rest to the over. Show. <laughs> oh, man. We're back. Indeed. You feeling better? Huh? <laughs> Let's keep talking about Demogorgon. Tell me about Demogorgon. Right? I, I really, oh, I really want to tell you about Demogorgon right now. All right, I think I will. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's move on to Fifth Edition, the Demogorgon we all know and love. Okay, right? You love Demogorgon, right? Sure, I do. <laughs> uh, so 
everybody has seen this book cover, Out of the Abyss. That's my boy, Demogorgon. It's a very nice looking book cover for sure. So that art is kind of misleading compared to what we've been speaking about because he's supposed mm-hmm. to have like these snake like heads where like there's this uh, depiction of him and from the three E lore where he's got like these really long serpent neck and uh, the heads. Oh, are, yeah. You know, sometimes like a, he's. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're but saying. But in this one, it, I don't know if you can't see it because of the angle, but it looks like they're just a fixed like normal heads just trying to take up that same spot. That's Real. been the traditional uh, imagery of Demogorgon since fourth edition, at least. OK, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just a lot of the descriptions describe like the because he's supposed to have like this uh, reptilian body. Yeah, he I does. Guess. So like yeah. the snake heads kind of make sense. And like these yeah. real long like tentacles, like yeah, kind tentacle of great arms. old one esque and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Everybody knows that. So pretty much in Out of the Abyss, um, all of these demon lords, including Demogorgon and some of the other notable ones, get summoned into the Underdark. Mm-hmm. And everybody in the Underdark is going insane. Your the your players are supposed to go down there and kind of do a little tour and figure out what's going on a little bit. Right. And they're getting help from NPCs and stuff like these mages that are up to no good or up, yeah. to, up to trying to fix these problems. And basically the goal is to get all those demon lords gathered in one place so they can duke it out and have yeah. a sick battle yeah. and demogorgon stands on top like mm-hmm. he always do the mm-hmm. true prince of the yeah Abyss. i think the canon ending is that demogorgon wins that fight um i think orcus might be a secondary option and then it gives yeah. you the option to you can kind of put whoever you want on top there yeah so yeah, um adventure. i mean they could you could win because it i i remember reading in the module like you give the option to your players to rest beforehand so they can oh, be no, at full no, spec. What I meant was like you have the option of deciding who wins the oh, fight yeah. between the demons. And right. Demogorgon and then, is the cannon and I think they have a little sub cannon or it could be Orcus mm-hmm. and then after that it's just like but you can make it whoever you want. And then the PCs are supposed to go in and clean up whatever's exactly. left. Which, exactly. You know in this case so can't, like you said canonically Demogorgon or Orcus whoever. Right. Probably Demogorgon though. Yeah he's um, the cannon winner because he should be the most powerful uh, with Orcus being a very close second, like a very Vegeta Goku kind of yeah. thing going on. Apparently, um, Demogorgon was slain by Dritz Duorden. Well, I mean, thing. It, yeah, in the I don't know if that, there was a novel that came out, but that might there be is. the canon of yeah. Out of the Abyss. R.A. Salvatore's novel, uh, <sighs> Archmage. This makes me roll my eyes. Okay. Really? Yeah. How come? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like there's a, it, there's a lot of things wrong with Dritz as a character. Oh, we'll talk about that in the Dritz episode. OK, cool. <laughs> Nobody freak out. It's OK. Are we, are we fans of Dritz? I feel like I should be. I mean, I'm ambivalent towards him. OK, yeah. that's fair. That's good enough yeah. for me. Um, so we kind of talked about what Demo Grown looks like, right? He's uh, um, yes. Yes, he's did. a Tanari. Um, mm-hmm. Apparently he's somewhat humanoid, mandrel, baboon face, mm-hmm. sometimes hyena, right. depending on like, you know, that's kind of like Roman and Greek depictions of God. Sometimes they, they vary from, right. Right. you know, it's like that game telephone, maybe. I don't know. Sure. Like yeah. tell, a bunch of people <laughs> told you they saw a baboon face, but then but like, you yeah, remember hyena? hyena face. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> that's scary, too. <laughs> so these two heads that Demogorgon has, they're actually split personalities. Indeed. One of them is obsessed with, I think it's the left head is I'm. Um, Amil, 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 and Hethrodiah, which is easy to say. Mm-hmm. One of them is uh, concerned with deception mainly, and the other one, destruction. Okay. But they plot secretly against each other to either kill and possess the form of Demogorgon themselves or, right. or right. conjoin the personalities to be one. Yeah, he is two people, essentially. Yeah. And uh, both want to control the whole. It's cool. I, I read something about, I forgot what it was, but... Um, people summoning like an avatar of Demogorgon to serve them. But there's a flaw in the process where they take on the aspect of one of the heads more than the other one. So right. like you get a variation of these like servants, right. if you will. That's pretty cool. It's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So these uh, basically like with this duality, um, it's just this twin persona. I mean, he's got like these blue scales on him. Um, I'm sure that adds to like his good armor class. I don't right. know. Do you happen to know the stats of like the current Demogorgon? Off the top of my head, I think he's a challenge rating 26. Yeah, that sounds right. And uh, that's all I really got. Yeah, yeah. he's strong as hell. Yeah, I very mean, powerful. Yeah. Um, he's got these forked tails. They, like they do all this crazy shit, right? Like mm-hmm. he like hits you with his tentacles and like causes like this leprosy style decay oh, wow. across your body that's pretty and, like, cool i like that you like laying shit to waste his heads like the gazes do different things they like if they both look at you he can hypnotize you and like make you do his bidding i yeah. guess yeah. i don't Demon know Demon very much about dominating everything around him yeah. yeah apparently he's comfortable in the water i mean he would 
according to like where yeah. he's from, the plane, it's there's like there's a lot of water, big yeah. ass ocean, pretty much. With, yeah. like, these and he's on rocks island, coming right? out of it. Yeah, yeah, he's uh he's on like these two spiral like serpentining towers that mm-hmm. are conjoined at the top near a bridge, and mm-hmm. it's kind of like okay, these like like the two heads of Demogorgon almost like some symbolism. Right, there. right, I like that. Um, and that's where he rules the this plane of the abyss from, and apparently like. Every piece of land is kind of like these towers, except mm-hmm. for like this one jungled area. Yeah, I was gonna say, what about the jungle? Yeah, yeah Lemoriax, I yeah. think, is what it's called. Okay. And um, apparently, it's real fucked up there. Right, right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's in the abyss. Mm-hmm. But uh, I guess there are other. I was reading that there are other cities in the abyss that are kind of like. You, I guess, if a mortal would frequent that area, it would be kind of taking some getting used to, but it, more normal comparatively than this island that demogorgon demogorgon does travel there and has a palace there that he rules from apparently right, on like a yes. high point yes he does um yeah apparently it's shit okay <laughs> yeah uh, i figured um that was more of a I guess I'll be you in this instance and be like, oh, I guess we'll do a future episode on that. Oh, uh, and that, that like an, an Atlas Exterior. Yeah, exactly. Mom. Okay, that yeah. sounds good. We could do that. Like maybe we could uh, plug in a bunch of different um, layers of the abyss that we could sure. Kind of yeah, talk no, about. that sounds that sounds good. Did they? Did you ever get into the relationship between Deegan and Demogorgon? Yes, because mm-hmm. apparently that tower that Demogorgon rules from goes so deep down into this layer of the abyss, it reaches into the next layer of the abyss mm-hmm. where Dagon is, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they talk apparently oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah. Um, I actually I have like a list of people that uh, or people <laughs> other demons and stuff that Demogorgon knows. Uh-huh. Um, where is it? Oh yeah, here it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we we'll get into that a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah, let's get into it now. Fuck it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So, did I miss anything? Sorry, I got lost a little bit here. I uh, got starry eyed over Demogorgon. <laughs> um, I talked about the hypnotization. I talked about, oh, his tail, dude, his whip-like tail. I guess it just, like, sucks the life out of people. Oh, nice. He's got, like, a life-draining attack. Yeah. And then um, I talked about the tentacles, and I talked about, uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. I think we should talk about. Yeah. So uh, I know that he's got a rivalry with Orcus. I know that he's got an alliance with uh, Dagon. My understanding, he's probably at serious odds with, like, uh, Grotz and a bunch of the other yeah, princes, that's like real Yenagu. hard things to say. Um, yeah, Grot, oh. uh, Fraz Urblu. Oh God, yeah, him. Mm. Yeah, they none of them like each other. Oh, and no, here it is, no, man. They're all they're all rivals. They all fucking hate each other. Mandrilagon, that's Demogorgon's brother. So that's I guess <laughs> never that's never heard of this dude. Yeah, I couldn't find a, any information beyond this, so I don't know <laughs> if it's real or not. But apparently, there's somebody <laughs> named Mandrilagon, which kind of makes sense because the mandrel head, like the baboon head. Uh-huh. Like, I mean, yeah, sure, okay. I can definitely see. Maybe it's his son. <laughs> I saw a drawing of the mandrel face, the uh-huh. baboon face, yes. and then you know a humanoid body with a forked tail. And like instead of the tentacles for arms, it was just like these kind of like troll hands where they're real long. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But that's pretty much it. That's it was, and it was like a like a homemade sketch. You know, it was like pretty sure it was colored in with colored pencil or crayon. Okay, that doesn't sound canon. No, okay, but it was in uh, the Wikipedia. <laughs> All right, well, okay, fair <laughs> enough. Um, let's see, Abraxas, I guess, is a minor demon lord that serves him. Oh, okay, um, that controls the seventeenth layer of the abyss. Mm-hmm. It's called Death's Reward. Um, Let's see. How do you say these? Some of these names, man. Ils, Ilsidaher. Okay. That controls the ninetieth layer. Near. It's kind of like near. I guess they're. If you call on it the eighty-eighth layer and the ninetieth layer, I guess that signifies that they're close together in some way. Um. It probably. Okay. So, the abyss. The way it's set up is it's not. It's not really like. Like, okay, like the 90th layer and the 91st layer aren't like one on top of the other. Not like an onion. Yeah, not like an onion. It's not like an onion. But uh, basically, they're, they're kind of numbered in, in the, the number that they're discovered by mortal kind. Okay, and I so see. And so they are, it, so yeah, like 90, 91 have a direct connection probably. That's, like, it was yeah, discovered I went next, through the so, wormhole or whatever to get to the next exactly, one. Exactly. Okay. So that's kind of how it works. So space is not really like a, it's hard to yeah it's not it's not like normal. The be, they're they're numbering them as the best they could do but yeah, maybe exactly. it's even like the like, numbers are arbitrary yeah frankly, pretty so. much but yeah. apparently it has some some relevance to space according to this okay um let's see uh we talked about dagon uh so what is is dagon a demon lord or is that a great old one uh i know in hp lovecraft dagon is a great old one <laughs> well yes yes in the, in 5e he's a demon lord 
So in in Dungeons and Dragons, um, we t- we talked about the Oberyns in the episode. Oh, that's right. Episode. He was originally an Oberyn. That's um, right. He is now a demon lord, but he's still an Oberyn because that is what he is. Okay. But he also has his own layer of the abyss, and he kind of got with the status quo. Essentially, he's basically he's one of the very few Oberyn that are like, this is the new, this is the way things are now. I'm a demon lord. I ain't fucking around with that Oberyn shit no more. That's right. We kind of talked about yeah. this, right? How how Dagon is manipulating Demogorgon by right. like whispering to each head. Exactly. Like, like he, telling he pits the heads against each other. Like Dagon's supposed to be like a genius intellect and all this other stuff. Anyways, uh, they just named him Dagon after the. The deity Dagon from Lovecraft's work, yeah, so which is an underwater Leviathan monstrosity, yeah, which is what Dagon is. It's kind of the sim- the symbolism's there too. Like you go so deep down the 80th layer under the ocean, there's Dagon, like right. very far, just chilling, far so, realm. Yeah, it's going up, chilling. Bro. It's like a par- weird parallel. Your tower's really dope. So <laughs> aside from the <laughs> your tower's really dope. <laughs> aside from those, uh, like b- those are pretty much like major players in Demogorgon's life, right? Um. There's some smaller people. I think we can hit it, you know, pretty quickly here. Mm -hmm. But one of the major ones is this. I don't know. Can you help me say this one? Ixisatchel. Ixisatchel. Basically, they're manta rays. Mm -hmm. They look like manta rays. And they are like, so Demogorgon lives in his tower, right? Mm -hmm. And at the bottom of his tower is this briny ocean. Mm -hmm. There are krakens in there and these um, Ixisatchels or whatever. And they're all like giant demon manta rays. Yeah, they're all waging war on each other down there or whatever. But they're paying homage to Demogorgon and they're he loves the chaos, I'm sure. Yeah, Yeah. and 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 they're they're all worshiping. So these um, apparently these Ixit the manta ray guys, they are um, apparently they love to go and find humanoids that live underwater like um the tritons or something like that okay. and yeah. they like to kidnap them or kill them and mm-hmm. sacrifice them in the name of demon gorgon okay so that that's just like that's just something he's got going for him right um so he's ravaging the ocean with these ex- these man- manta ray demons mm-hmm. those <laughs> <laughs> i saw i even looked at the pronunciation the like it's i x i t x a C H. You're not supposed to be able to pronounce that, is what I'm getting from that. I mean, the wiki no, had a you. pronunciation, but it was. I'm good. <laughs> Demon manta rays. Um, so pretty much after that, um, there's a lot of other difficult to pronounce names. Um, we got Belcheresque, which is a Balor. Um, Demogorgon's right hand, apparently. Um, Major Enderin, a demon in command of a company of stone giant juju zombies. Uh, are <laughs> any of this ringing a bell to you? Uh, no, because I, I didn't do any of the research. Oh, right. shit. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking maybe you've heard of these other names. I mean, it, it's very common for uh, demon lords to have Balors as their generals. So, oh, that's cool. You know, okay, Gorvash is a, a Glabrazu demon who serves Demogorgon as a spy. Um, War Secretary General Gromsfed the Drowned, a huge uh, what is that? Chloricher, um, fourth war chief, who is the chief tactician of Demogorgon. Um, we have Saint Cargoth, the betrayer, the first Death Knight, and one of Demogorgon's top generals. Then the first Death Knight. Are we doing Death Knights this October? We are. Nice. We're doing Death Knights this October. I'm actually, I'm actually surprised that he has a Death Knight in service of him, since Orcus is like the undead one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. So there's there's a couple other weird things too. Um, well, let me go in order. Here's Kazul, the exarch of Demogorgon. Mm-hmm. And then here's the archpriest Nulanga, an ancient worshiper. Uh, but this one, Roz Vanke, a female lich pirate and one of the best monster <laughs> creators. That's crea- badass. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. And one of the best monster creators in service of Demogorgon. Okay. So, like, he's got this, he's got pieces in oh, his yeah, arsenal yeah, for sure. Like, this is why him and Orcus are the most powerful. Not only are they both physically the most powerful but they're the most well organized they both have armies and generals and like you know like yinagu and baphomet they're just savage monsters that have hordes behind them but okay there's no type of organization you it's know just like charge yeah charge charge and kill but with with demogorgon and with orcus like there is strategy there's thought process that goes into this there's a certain type of malevolent intelligence and organization to their chaotic destruction yeah i figured it only it can only go so far because it's based in like this chaotic realm or whatever it's like the embodiment of chaos so like who knows where these fools are with orcus it makes a little more sense because orcus uh used to be a human so he still has part of that like mentality where he's able to keep things organized demogorgon is impressive because he is a true blue demon um 
and and yet he still manages through sheer force of will to keep things organized. It's pretty impressive. So then we have a Therak or Theric. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a clone of Demogorgon, but one of the best <laughs> monsters he ever created. Like I've seen. Well, yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> Small me. It's like me. Yeah, so I've seen this where like yeah. copies of Demogorgon are being made, like avatars That's of Demogorgon are being put out into the world, and they're so, they're probably getting slain. Mini Gorgon. Yeah, but it's they're wreaking havoc out there. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I bet. Apparently, there's like there are human. It's cults. Like uh, when Cell makes five mini cells. Oh yeah, Cell Junior. Yeah, like they're one fifth. Oh dude, sh- yeah, it's they're Cell Junior. <laughs> yeah, they're a bunch it's of Cell Juniors. Though. I mean, they're one fifth as strong, but one fifth of Demogorgon is way more Demogorgon than you want to deal with. So, <laughs> fuck yeah, that's, that's pretty 20%. cool. This is the coolest fact I've gotten from today's episode. So no, far. yes, uh, the, uh, Ther- Therak is a di- directly translated to English as Demogorgon Junior. No, oh, of course, <laughs> that says it right here. Should have known. Weird. <laughs> um, is there any the chief assistant of Demogorgon Ulu Thurg, um, Bagramar, and Tetradarian are two generals of Demogorgon. Apparently, they're the clones of of a demon lord, uh, Bagramar, and the clone of Hethradaya, which is one of the heads. Interesting. Um, I guess they're just clones of his heads, which is like something we kind of touched on earlier. But I'm interested in this clone thing. How are they cloning anything? The, I think I guess like I don't really know. Like dark the, ritual, I'm sure. But. Yeah, man. Demon Gorgon. So what's <laughs> so what's Demon Gorgon's mo? What is his end goal? I mean, the death of the cosmos, I imagine. But yeah, I guess uh, to win the blood war, probably. Like I pretty I'm yeah. Pretty him sure. and Orcus are very involved in the blood war. Yeah, they're they're. Apparently they're they're kind of spearheading this thing with all these resources that they have. Yeah, so definitely. I, like, but at the same time, they war directly with each other too. Yeah, so they kind of like, dude, what are y'all doing in the in the abyss? It's just about death and destruction. And, and every time we talk about like yourself. goals of creatures like this, yeah. like this is essentially like an upscale beholder to me, where they like it. You beat yourself. You're Doctor Doom right. yourself. Well, I think uh, another part of it is is that remember that these are immortal beings so like for them it's truly about the long game like they're not worried about now <laughs> there is no they're short like, game yeah there is no short game for them it's like yeah in 30,000 years like it, the 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 playing ground will be different yeah you know i'll get I mean? there like yeah they'll i'll have my time day. so there's this real like dragging their feet kind of thing to it also remember i said one of the things about these immortal beings is like they're pretty much invulnerable Unless they fight each other directly, right? Which is why they never do that because, in the like, abyss. Because it's 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 uh, I mean, it's high risk, high reward. Like if you if Orcus and Demogorgon actually duke it out, one of them will win. Yeah, that I mean, but they're so close in power that neither of them wants to take that risk because they're so used to not being at risk due to being so powerful that um, it it kind of makes them cowardly. You know what I mean? These immortal oh. beings. You know what I mean? Because uh, they're so used to like never having to risk anything that when it comes to actually risking something, they don't want to. Yeah. Because yeah, it, it, so. it might be the end of forever for them. Exactly. Apparently the birth of Demogorgon, as we know him today, like with the two split heads, uh, mm-hmm. I guess him and Orcus were fighting with some other demon Lords up in like the celestial plane somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I forgot the name of the God that does this, but they, they split Demogorgon down the middle oh, and shit. Orcus jumps in and saves him. Oh, and then the, the remaining, uh, the leftover from Demogorgon, like that's where he got cut, just healed that way. And now he's got two heads. Oh, so that's how he has two heads. I thought he was just born that way. No. He, uh, Why would Orcus save Demogorgon? They were fighting this guy. Uh-huh. I don't know. It, there that's was a, interesting. There was a decent chunk of, of lore on it that I just totally forgot to put in these notes. Oh, wow. But I thought it would be worth mentioning from memory, even though well, like. We're going to do the Orcus episode at some point. I'm sure it'll We'll talk about up. it then because yeah. it, it's a big battle. So That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I guess they're all they were all fighting together. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. Do you have a? Is there are there any more questions I could try to answer about Demon Gorgon for you? Um, I'm trying to think if there's any like points that we should have brought up that maybe we didn't. No, I think we're good. I I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Like um, he's he's the prince of demons. He's you know arguably the most powerful of all demon lords. He's all about madness, chaos, and destruction. He's heavily involved in the blood war. He's got a rivalry with Orcus. Um, and he wants the cosmos to die in in black entropy. Yeah, and apparently he makes a lot of clones. Yeah, apparently he <laughs> he, you know, he has his own like clone conspiracy thing going on. Yeah, that's really weird. That's probably part of the risk factor for Demogorgon. Is like I'll just clone myself. <laughs> Why do I need to go anywhere? Right. It's, it's pretty ingenious. <laughs> well, um, I guess if you're good, well, then good. Let's, let's call it a game. Let's call it a game. We'll All talk right. to you guys later. Bye. Bye. Do you have any holy water or like a spell of restoration?
Dungeon Cast.